Coming up now on your spoiler-free wrestling news rundown, we've got an update on the Kota Ibushi situation involving him and New Japan Pro Wrestling. We've also got an update on the Best of the Super Juniors tournament and news from elsewhere around the wrestling world. Subscribe to Spoiler Free Wrestling for all your wrestling news. There have been some significant developments involving Kota Ibushi and his ongoing situation with New Japan Pro Wrestling. After having taken several days off from posting to social media, Kota Ibushi returned to Twitter today and posted a multi-part thread. I do need to give out a trigger warning here that some of the translations of Kota Ibushi's tweets do deal with suicide. So please be aware of this, and if you need to skip to the next uh, section, perhaps it is best for you to do so. So, here are some of the translations of Kota Ibushi's tweets, and please bear in mind that these are translated by Google Translate, which is notoriously uh, inaccurate sometimes, especially as it concerns Japanese to English. So please take these with a grain of salt, but I do think the general uh, message that Kota Ibushi is, is conveying does come out in these translations. So he wrote, this is on May 23rd. He wrote, suddenly I can't see it anymore. The true fact of the screenshot, which was previously named. I was wondering whether to put it out, but I will tell you because it is unbearable to see the current condition of my mother. I still have no apologies. Kikuchi and Obari will not feel guilty. Notification of dismissal online without meeting. Did you notice that you were worried? A second tweet then reads, As expected, I had reached the limit. So when I consulted about the fact that such a line suddenly came and I was doing something like power harassment, he said, I can quit now, with a powerless word. The next day, my mother attempted suicide. I said clearly, Kikuchi, the current president cannot forgive, so I will fight to the end. And his final tweet in this thread reads, I did something that was absolutely unforgivable. I don't even get in touch with them in person, and I'll be able to talk to them soon. The agent has also been consulted. Kikuchi, current president Obari, do you understand? Immediately after Mother's Day, my mother attempted suicide. Attempted murder. It's a miracle that I lived. I, he could mean that it's a miracle that she lived. But can you heal my lower back bones? There are still more, but it will cause other troubles. So the Kota Ibushi situation was also addressed on Friday in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. So this is coming from before he sent out the tweets that we just went over. But uh, Meltzer wrote that the only major stuff is that there is belief that Ibushi's statements and bringing up the Yakuza has hurt the stock price of Bushi Road. So that becomes a serious company issue. Because Ibushi went, over, uh, went after Obari, the president of New Japan, this may take Bushi Road president Kadani to intervene. So there's now belief that Ibushi's comments about New Japan Pro Wrestling Management have hurt the stock price of the parent company. So... That's a serious issue. Meltzer also mentioned that another wrestler close to the situation who knows Ibushi has said that Ibushi is just waiting to be released and isn't going to say any more right now. Well, Ibushi did return to Twitter on Monday. Ibushi also believes a lot of fans have turned on him for saying things negative about the company and privately because in Japanese society that is rare. People try to downplay what he said or dismiss it with the idea he's nuts or bitter, especially revealing things like bookers and such, which in the Japanese industry you don't talk about publicly in that country. Ibushi has made it clear he also has no interest in returning to DDT. So Ibushi has no interest in returning to DDT. I, maybe the belief here is that Ibushi, his wrestling career in Japan, could be over. There have been reports earlier that Ibushi is not interested in moving to the United States, which puts a uh, full-time move to AEW, which AEW would welcome him with open arms, what with Kenny Omega there and, and Tony Khan uh, would definitely be someone who, who would love to bring in someone like Kota Ibushi. But for that to happen, Ibushi would have to move to the United States. 
So there's there's a lot going on here with Kota Ibushi and not all of it is clear, but we will keep you up to date on everything that comes out re regarding the Kota Ibushi and New Japan situation. Just stay subscribed to Spoiler Free Wrestling. Will Ospreay is out of action due to a kidney infection. He had to pull out from a Rev Pro show this weekend. He had been scheduled to face Minoru Suzuki on the May 22nd show from London's York Hall. Rev Pro announced the following. They wrote, On Thursday he had come down with what was thought to be food poisoning, and it was assumed he would be good to go come showtime. However, as time went on, he got progressively worse to the extent he was rushed to A&E, accident and emergency, or how the Brits say ER, and after an examination, he has today been diagnosed with a kidney infection. Osprey took to Twitter and wrote the following. He said, I honestly can't tell you how gutted I am to be missing RevPro. I've got a temperature of 40 degrees. I can't stand up without feeling the need to faint. I'm sweating, then cold straight away. Friday night, I had my bloods taken to find out I have a serious kidney infection. Sorry. And then in the daily update on the Wrestling Observer website, Dave Meltzer wrote regarding Osprey, It's serious business, and until the infection clears, we won't have an estimate of when he can return to the ring. But what he has is no joke. Osprey said he was as miserable as he's ever been, that he can't stand without feeling he was about to faint, and gets bad sweats as well as bad chills. So best wishes go out to Osprey and a speedy recovery. Hopefully he will be better in time for the June 3rd show, the best of the Super Juniors finals. But uh, just best wishes go out to Will Osprey. On AEW Dynamite this week, CM Punk arguably took a couple of shots at Kenta while he was on commentary during the match between Hangman Page and Koneske Takeshita. During that match, Page delivered a GTS to Takeshita, and this is coming off of CM Punk the previous week delivering a buckshot lariat. So they've each done the other's move. Of course, there's a big beef between Kenta and CM Punk regarding CM Punk using Kenta's move, which was the GTS. On commentary, Punk mentioned after Hangman Page did the GTS, he, he said, some people get really mad when you do that move. And he also mentioned that the GTS was popularized by CM Punk. And I think the comments here weren't so much directed to Hangman Page as they were directed to Kenta. The person that Kenta was referring to getting mad when you do the GTS is Kenta, who has been critical of Punk online about Punk using his finishing move. Although, up until recently, it had seemed as though this was sort of good-natured ribbing from one to the other. But then during an interview with ComicBook.com, CM Punk was asked if he was interested in a match with Kenta at the Forbidden Door, and all Punk responded with was, no. Also on commentary on Dynamite when this was going on, Punk mentioned regarding Paige using the move that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And I don't know if that wasn't a comment directed at Kenta as well. Perhaps CM Punk was trying to explain, I use that move because I respect your work. Kenta seemingly responded to this on Twitter. He wrote, Kenta is greater than Hangman Page. Hangman Page is greater than Punk. Using those math symbols where the alligator's mouth opens towards the larger number, or in this case, name. And he also responded to a tweet from Danhausen, where Danhausen was responding to a picture from some stuff that happened after Dynamite. It appears CM Punk is giving Danhausen some chips. And Danhausen wrote, He's paid up through double or nothing. He may use the GTS on Adam V. Cowboy at the pay-per-view. Kenta just responds with call 911. And whether he's referring to emergency services or that very large wrestler from ECW is unclear. But I want to know what you have to say about this. Were CM Punk's comments on commentary on Dynamite directed towards Kenta? Were those a few subtle jabs he was taking at Kenta? 
And do you think it's possible that we still get Kenta versus CM Punk on the Forbidden Door pay-per-view? The renewal of a famous rivalry from New Japan Pro Wrestling took place last week on Impact Wrestling. Of course, many of you remember the feud between The Kingdom against Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows. Well, now we've got the OGK, who are The Kingdom, against the good brothers Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows in Impact. And we know that Carl Anderson has in the past been infatuated with Maria. But it did appear as though he was able to break that spell she has on him during this match. So Maria got up on the ring apron to break up a a pin when it looked like the Good Brothers had the match won. So then Bennett comes out of nowhere to try and spear Anderson, but misses and ends up spearing his own wife instead. So Maria is down. And the the 2015-2016 version of Carl Anderson would have only tended to Maria at this point. He was that infatuated with her. But the 2022 version turned his attention to Mike Bennett, gave him the gun stun, and picked up the win for the Good Brothers. So this feud you know is going to continue. So if you're looking for the revamping of an old Bullet Club feud involving Carl Anderson, Maria, the Kingdom, Doc Gallows. That appears to be taking place in Impact Wrestling. Maybe something that some of you would find worth watching. There was a comment in the comment section recently on a previous video that I have to say I really agree with. There was definitely sentiment expressed that Bullet Club is just losing too often in Impact Wrestling when right now they are on quite the winning streak in New Japan Pro Wrestling and New Japan Pro Wrestling of America. But they've had trouble getting some wins lately in Impact Wrestling, but we'll see how this feud plays out involving the Good Brothers and the Kingdom. There's been several shows in the Best of the Super Juniors Tournament. Let's take a look at the updated standings. And you can see in Block A... It's very much the Hiramu Takahashi and Taiji Ishimori show so far as we are one third of the way through the round robin. The only two undefeated competitors at this point is the multi-time best of the Super Juniors winner Hiramu Takahashi and the current IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion Taiji Ishimori. However, there's some other notable things to bring up here. Uh, First of all, uh, it's been a rough go for Yoshinobu Kanemaru as well as Clark Connors. They're both sitting at 0-3. Show Francesco, Akira, and Taguchi are sitting at 1-2, while Yo, Ace Austin, and Alex Zane are at 2-1. So a good start to the tournament for Ace Austin and Alex Zane. They won their first two matches before dropping their third. Then on the B block, it's a very similar situation where you've got two of the bigger favorites in the tournament sitting atop the block, as El Fantasmo and El Desperado are both still undefeated with perfect 3-0 records as we are one-third of the way through the round robin. Underneath them, we've got Bushi, Robbie Eagles, and El Lindemann, who are all 2-1. Wheeler Yuta, Doki, and TJP are 1-2, while Master Watto and Teton have had a rough go out of the gate. They are 0-3. So then that leads us up to three big important days in the tournament upcoming this week. On Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, there will be three straight shows from Cork and Hall, and all three shows will involve matches from both the A block and the B block. So everyone will have three more tournament matches under their belt by the end of Thursday's show, and we will be two-thirds of the way done the tournament. So let's start things off with Tuesday's show. And it starts in the A block with Alex Zane taking on Francesco Akira. Alex Zane is 2-1. Akira is 1-2. We then go to the B block where Teton is 0-3 and and he'll take on TJP who is 1-2. Back to the A block. Taguchi will take on Clark Connors. Clark Connors is 0-3. Taguchi is 1-2. Back to the B block. We will see Bushi versus Wheeler Yuta. Bushi is 2-1, Wheeler Yuta is 1-2. Then we go back to the A block, and Yo will take on Ace Austin. Both of those two competitors are 2-1 in the tournament thus far. In the sixth match, we will see Doki 
who is one and two, take on the undefeated El Fantasmo, who sits at three and zero. Oh. Then in the seventh match, we will see Master Watto, who is yet to get in the win column. He's zero and three, taking on Robbie Eagles, who is two and one. Then in the eighth match, we will see the undefeated Haramu Takahashi, who's three and zero, take on the still yet to get a win Yoshinobu Kanemaru. And then in the semi-main event, we'll see the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion Taiji Ishimori, who's three and zero, up against Sho, who is one and two. And in the main event, the undefeated El Desperado at three and zero will take on El Lindeman, who is two and one. That then takes us to Wednesday's show, also from Cork and Hall. And those matches are Ace Austin versus Alex Zane. That should be good. Bushi versus Doki. Clark Connors versus Francesco Akira. Teton versus Wheeler Yuta. El Lindeman versus El Fantasmo. Taguchi versus Sho. Kanemaru versus Taiji Ishimori. Robbie Eagles versus TJP. And in the semi-main event, Master Wato will take on El Desperado. And in the main event, Yo will face Haramu Takahashi. That then leads us to Thursday's show, also from Corican Hall. Here are the matches announced for that show. In the opening contest, it will be Master Wato versus Teton. They've both stumbled out of the gate, so this, that's an important match for both of them. Doki versus TJP. Clark Connors versus Kanemaru. Taguchi versus Alex Zane. Yo versus Francesco Akira. Wheeler Yuta versus El Lindeman. Ace Austin versus Taiji Ishimori. And Bushi versus El Desperado. Then in the semi main event, Haramu Takahashi will take on Sho. And in the main event, this should be a fun one, Robbie Eagles will take on El Fantasmo. Then after that, we just have the final three days of the round robin, followed by the finals, which will take place on June 3rd. So Saturday, May 28th. Sunday, May 29th, and Tuesday, May 31st are the final three shows in the round robin, and then the finals will take place on June 3rd from the Nippon Budokan. Also regarding the finals of the tournament on June 3rd, New Japan Pro Wrestling announced several names that are confirmed for the event, although no matches other than the finals of the tournament have been announced, but New Japan Pro Wrestling noted that Jay White, Juice Robinson, Carl Anderson, Doc Gallows, the Gorillas of Destiny, Tama Tonga and Tanga Loa, as well as members of the United Empire, the Great Ocon, Aaron Hanari, Will Ospreay, and Jeff Cobb, as well as Zack Sabre Jr. will all be on that finals show on June 3rd. And of course, many of them are building up to big matches, which will take place at New Japan Pro Wrestling Dominion, which will take place Sunday, June 12th from Osaka Joe Hall. The next video we release will be on Thursday, and between now and then, AEW will present an episode of Dynamite from the Michelob Ultra Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. They will be in Las Vegas, Nevada all week leading up to the Double or Nothing pay-per-view. And so here is what is announced for next week's episode of Dynamite. There will be a face-to-face -face segment involving Hangman Page and CM Punk. And we've got a bunch of matches announced for the show as well. As Swerve Strickland will face Ricky Starks and Jungle Boy in a triple threat match. And of course, that's previewing the tag team title match, which will take place at Double or Nothing, where Swerve will team with Keith Lee, Ricky Starks will team with Will Hobbs, and Jungle Boy will team with Luchasaurus. We will see the final Owen Hart Foundation Men's Tournament semifinal match. Samoa Joe and Kyle O'Reilly will face off with the winner going up against Adam Cole in the finals at Double or Nothing. We will see the Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles on the line on Wednesday night as FTR, Cash Wheeler, and Dax Harwood will defend against Rapungi Vice, Rocky Romero, and Trent Beretta. We will see a Owen Hart Foundation Women's Tournament semifinal match on the show as well when Tony Storm takes on Dr. Britt Baker. And in a steel cage match, Sean Spears will take on Wardlow. And that's going to do it for this video, everyone. Our next video comes out on Thursday. Make sure you are subscribed to Spoiler Free Wrestling for all your wrestling news.